The White House has published a sweeping set of expert controls on Chinese chip manufacturers, adding over 30 Chinese entities to a so-called unverified list. The list states that these firms are unable to be inspected and meet U.S. standards. Beijing has expressed its opposition to the latest restrictions, calling it a typical act of technological bullying that violates the spirit of cooperation between the two sides. But it's not only Chinese firms that will feel the impact. Some analysts argue that the new restrictions will also harm American companies and those around the whole world. Well, let's not forget that for many American chip companies, their sales to China are an important source of revenue uh, that allows them to reinvest in research and development uh, and retain a competitive edge, as this sum accounts for one-third of their total revenues. So if the new measures are strictly implemented, it could put as much as 30 percent of some American chip industry giant's total revenue at risk. And in fact, it already has. Shares in chipmakers across the globe tumbled on Monday, following reports that the slump may be worse than some thought. After the U.S. government prohibited U.S. semiconductor firm NVIDIA from selling sophisticated chips to China back in August, the company estimated that it may lose approximately $400 million in potential sales to China in the third quarter. Meanwhile, global chip companies are already starting to consider ways to overcome the impact of the new U.S. export controls. The Semiconductor Industry Association, which represents 99 percent of the U.S. semiconductor industry by revenue, has urged the U.S. government to implement the rules in a targeted way to help mitigate unintended harm to U.S. innovation. Well, these restrictions are not new to China. They actually go back several years. Chinese companies are getting pretty used to them and have had time to adapt and overcome. So instead of curbing China's advanced computing, some say such restrictions have incentivized China's domestic innovation. Take a listen. By cutting access to these core inputs and, and having done so now for almost the last half decade, uh, that threat illuminated to the Chinese all of the vulnerabilities in their technological ecosystem. Uh, they have spent the last five years in overdrive. This is clearly bearing fruit for the Chinese who are developing a standalone um, moated ecosystem that builds, uh, weans itself off dependency on U.S. core inputs. Several leading semiconductor companies in China, including major producers and component suppliers, reported strong results in the first half of 2022, despite Americans' relentless crackdown on China's chip industry. One of these winners is China's largest chip maker, Semiconductor Manufacturing International, or SMIC, which reported a better-than-expected revenue of $1.9 billion in the second quarter of this year, up 3.3 percent from the previous quarter and up 41.6 percent year-on-year. And it took only two years for the company to move from a 14-nanometer process to a 7-nanometer one when it comes to producing chips. That's twice as fast as TSMC and four times faster than Intel. So there's reason to believe that tougher curbs on China will only force the country to become more self-sufficient, while simultaneously crushing the revenues of U.S. semiconductor firms that previously sold to the Chinese market. As China's foreign ministry spokesperson Mao Ning said on Saturday, the politicization, instrumentalization and weaponization of technology and trade issues by the United States will not stop China's development. Instead, it will backfire and galvanize Chinese innovation.